I, I'm a security analyst at, at John Lewis. John Lewis, pretty much like a lot of organizations, went um, do IT the way how it was. So you buy your, your IT infrastructure, you hold on to it, and then you have the idea that if I could see it, it is safe. If I could see it, I have control over where it goes. So I started to, 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 to prepare for, for this um, talk. And the, the thing about it is, is that when, when you, I work on the information security desk, and when you're busy firefighting and doing day-to-day -day stuff, I'm, I'm into the IT, and I'm, I'm looking at the, the systems, the infrastructure. If someone comes and asks that we would like to have a relationship with a third party, I'm, I'm looking at, okay, what information are you carrying, and, and how is it being done, and so on. And I, you know, cloud is happening, and it's, it's, it, it's coming along. Lots of times we, we get uh, requests to, to buy in cloud services. And still, the idea is still that sort of comparing. So how, how does that compare to what we have in the system here? Um, but then starting to prepare for this, I got more into cloud and, and what is happening and, and where this could, could go. One, one of the things I, I write about quite often is the fact that you, you should automate a lot of your security. Um, a lot of times we, we spend, I, I think, too much time doing the manual work and, and I, as I said, firefighting and moving on. So um, I said, I always say, automate it, automate it, because, not because I don't want to do the work, but because as an information security person, I think I could add much more value to the organization if I'm allowed to, to let's say, help guide where we want to go with the use of IT. Not where we want to go with IT, but where we want to go with the use of IT. But I don't have the time for that because I'm busy doing the manual work. So when, I, when the cloud um, preparing for this, I started to see, well, huh, there are a lot of things that will give a big shift into what is happening. So you might have to excuse the fact that I did prepare what is the cloud? <laughs> um, so you have your SaaS, your PaaS, your I, your infrastructure as a service. So again, you know, the, your SaaS, which is the, the biggest, um, which is what is most taught about when you, you talk about cloud, you know. So, so people look at software as a service. So that is the sales pitch to a lot of the times of the, the business and so on. I guess because if you look at um, platform as a service, that is basically being aimed at, um, at developers. But I, I, again, as I'll go into I'll, more in the future, that will be a lot of users will find. And I guess from the, the previous talk, you had three students who were able to pretty much perform a sort of pass type of role because they, they pulled together, they, they mashed up something and was able to put it out there in a very short time. They did not you know, buy a particular service that was there. They mashed it up and then put it out. And that is what I am excited about, Cloud. So when I say, no, I'm not going to particularly follow the thing, I I'm, I'm pretty much might end up racing through my slides and then want to talk about the bright future out there, <laughs> the cloudless future. <laughs> um, uh, just say, if anyone doesn't know, infrastructure as a service, again, the top and the bottom, are, I think, are the two big sellers, maybe, because infrastructure as a service is what you might want to use if you now starting off a business and you think, uh, should I really invest in an infrastructure? I'm a part-time lecturer at the University of, of, of Bedfordshire, and we get a lot of students from third world countries. And when, we, when I'm doing um, um, their, their projects with them, one of my, my advice to them is think, think, think about the opportunity you have from a country that did not go through the legacy that the UK went through. So you're actually entering into IT 
with all of these things. You, like, for instance, in a lot of African countries, the, the, the talk was, oh, how are they ever going to get all these telephone lines and the power and, the, and the so on to these remote areas? Now, a lot of those countries just run on their mobiles. This, so they did not say, well, we're 20 years behind, let's go and build a new infrastructure and try to catch up later. No, no, the technology is here already, and let's go it. You know, I, a student of mine looked into, uh, just about a couple of years ago, what about having a, a Y? So you have a community center, they have a satellite link, and then you share out the, the, the use of the, um, the IT. People could come in there and use it, and how is, what is the operating model for that? So, that, that is how I feel about cloud. We, 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 we're pretty much at a, a start of something that could go anywhere, really. But it, it, it does change the way how um, business is going to operate. Okay. Right. So clouds, to me, they, again, we, we've had the, um, the examples. Clouds are like, <coughs> utilities. What, what they do, they, they, ma they master the doing of something and they scale it to the point that even a single user benefits from it. It's sold on demand, you use what you want to use, but the provider, the cloud provider is there to make sure that you could use how much ever you want to use. So from this little graph that we, we have there, if you buy equipment from the start, let's say that's, that's the bottom line. So that's the level of your capacity. Yeah, I'll walk across. So this is the level of your capacity here with your infrastructure. Right now this is your use. So you have over capacity at the moment. But what happens when the business starts to do well? Your 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 use and what you need to use is going up. So ah let me buy more and then you go up. Then you at this point you have a little bit of over capacity but then you catch up again. The thing about cloud services, you could track that line with infrastructure. As you, use, as you want to use, you buy more. As you don't want to use, you, you, you buy less. It's not always there, it's not always on. You don't, have to, to, you don't have to pay for it when it's not used. And that is one of the, the beautiful things about it. So you, instead of capital expenditure, instead of you put in out these things and you say, okay, I have a server room and this server room is populated with these pieces of hardware and of course they're going to be depreciating, they're going to be, when, when they're being, um, when you have under capacity in your infrastructure and you're overusing it, these things are degrading at a faster rate. So your, your money is going out, should I buy more and so on? No, you could move now to operating expenditure just like how you're paying for the rent of your building, just how you're paying for the lights in your room, just how you're paying for water, you pay for IT use. Okay. So we talk about the fears. Um, there, there, there are lots of examples, but to me, I always keep coming back to thinking, I've been using my email for over 10 years, I, I think I remember when a friend had to recommend me to get Gmail and, and so on, and that was maybe five gig or something like that. Now, we don't even think about the space. Hotmail has moved in, into that. Uh, you just keep all your email. When, when you had your, your client on or your Outlook on your desk, you know, you had to clean. It all depended on how much space you had here and then you used to make sure that you wipe out certain emails and so on. The only thing I wipe out now is my junk. And so I'm saying that the, the way how we've come to trust email, believe me, <laughs> that is how you will come to trust a lot of cloud services eventually. Once the reliability be, gets better and better, things like even service level agreements, you might need bother to put that in, in, a, in a contract again. You might have a particular contract. I mean, you don't have a service level agreement really with, with, your, um, with any of the utilities. When you pick up your phone there, we don't really compare well 
when I talk on Orange, I hear the person better than when I talk on, on um, Vodafone and so on. It's all, all of that has been built up to a particular level. And, and again, to uh, what, 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 what I think we, we, the only thing, one of the big things I think we need in, in the, the cloud space is maybe something like, like a, a BT type of person to, to drive those standards up to that level. So anyone else coming on, they know that, okay, so this is the service level that we have to provide as such. Okay. Now, um, one, one other thing to do for this now. All right, yeah. So big concern. It's out of our house. It's out of our control. What, uh, is that the, the right way, way to go? I guess if you're working with a lot with um, DPA and PCI, it's a legitimate question today. But again, because of platform as an application, uh, as a service, you, you are going to get PCI platforms, DPA platforms, where your developers or other developers too will be able to go onto that and what they develop, hit and tick all of those boxes. So again, soon you wouldn't have to be asking those questions about, oh, is it, is it safe and will I be compliant? The fact of the, the control, I, I am controlling my IT, that is becoming more and more expensive. Okay, you, you, you're pretty much like the person trying to maintain um, your own electricity supply. As an aside, and I'm not shooting myself in the foot here, it just shows how technology moves. In terms of electricity supply, we're, we're, we're getting to the point where we're capable of having your own electricity supply now by having a sun, um, a, a solar panel on your roof. And that is almost going full circle. But again, a factory would not be able to run on, on that. So we, we're still at the, the stage in cloud where we moving away from the, having the, your, in your personal generator to getting, into, getting on a, a grid and just buying it as a, a service. Most of the, the, the figures we see, they are pointing to the fact that um, it, it is cheaper to, to run in the, the cloud. You, you get figures something like about maybe 30% saving in, if you look at maintaining your own infrastructure as opposed to maintaining contracts with, with a cloud provider. This is for um, infrastructure as a service. And I'll say it's still open country. By that I mean you still have, it's not properly standardized as yet, but personally I, I, I don't want to see it too standardized quickly. I, I prefer the Wild West approach where um, I am able to, let's say, imagine a service that I want, and developers are, and companies are able to imagine what they, they could do, and are not too bound by, let's say, a standard or a law as yet. Let, let it de develop first, and then those, those chips will settle as it. Okay, so sort of future looking. Um, I think, as I said, the, the cloud suppliers will specialize. The, you will have your PCI, your DWS. We, we already said, you know, your medical services, like in, when, what you have in community clouds. Um, you might have cloud offerings just that lawyers will be interested in, sports, sports event organizers, all of these things that, that will come. Um, cloud will revolutionize business. And by that is, is what I touched on earlier, which was your IT department most likely will, will shrink. And the IT people will have to become more business people. I've been championing that for quite a long time, saying that the security people are supposed to be thinking more business-like. Well, cloud is making it for the whole IT department. Having this, this skill of, of knowing um, maybe what are the protocols and hooking up these different systems and so on. And you remember the, um, the classical geek thing about knowing how all of the, the um, 
um, Unix commands and so on. Those things might be in the cloud providers business, but in your business, let's say you're in the business of selling shoes, that is what you wanted to do. You wanted to sell shoes. You understand shoes. You understand what people want when they, they talk about a shoe. Why are you spending over 80% of your, your budget, your IT budget, to maintain infrastructure, to be hiring people in just to maintain that so that you could sell shoes? Maybe you just buy those services and concentrate on selling shoes. Your IT people might be able to tell you, oh, look what is coming around the corner. We have chips in shoes. You might not know that, and you might not be able to have that IT discussion, but if your IT people are given the, the opportunity to get away from the, the grind and the shoveling of the coals all the time, then they could make that strategic contribution to, to, to your business. And I, 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 I think in years, years to come, it will be a different shift. You would not be seeing that separation of business and IT. I, IT will be somebody there who's advising on how you could use digital technology to move the business priorities forward. Um, and pretty much then the, the conversation, because I, I'm coming from an information security background, and a lot of the, the question is, how safe is the cloud and so on? And, and this is the, the CIA um, chief information officer. And the CIA is moving in, into the cloud. And I'm, I'm thinking, well, how much research do I need to do on that to, to consider it an endorsement? I, I pretty much think that they, they will have done a lot of their homework. Um, I'm not saying that the CIA gets every, everything right, but uh, you could imagine the amount of laws and, um, let's say, controls and reports that they have to work under. And if they are able to get this, this through, I, there will be a lot of checks and balances that have been ticked there all, all, already. So um, how much more time do I have? Okay. Wow. STOP. <laughs> um, but before I go, <laughs> I, I, I just wanted to see, um, in, in terms of, of the cloud and maybe getting the best advantage of the cloud, you, you pretty much have to think like an African. No, you, you have to get rid of this idea of this is how IT is. It, 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 it means that it has to sit on a mainframe and then you have to build your network inside of your, um, inside of your business and ring fence it and so on. Just think, and when I say think of an African, this is in a very positive sense, is that you, you are coming in with a lot of bright ideas about business and you have this technology that you could just grab and pull together that will allow you to do business. And, and if IT is not your business, you no longer have to worry about that. Okay? Thank you. And I'll take any questions. Oh, yeah. I, I think we've got to move this on and we'll try and take some afterwards.